So apparently Avengers Infinity War is coming out soon. This is information that genuinely blindsided me. It also set off a horrifying little realization that goes a little something like, oh, fuck. Fuck, I've seen every single one of these goddamn things, haven't I? So in order to validate to the internet my horrible usage of my limited time on this planet, I'm going to do that list thing. I'm gonna go worst to best. Now, a few disclaimers before I get started. First of all, this video might contain spoilers for any of these movies. I'm not gonna go super in depth on each one, but I am going to touch on points that I did and didn't like, especially when I rank something abnormally high or low, because some people need to have explained to them why their opinions are worse than mine. Second, let's establish something real quick. These are all corporate multi-million dollar movies. There's enough money cranked in any given one to where they're never completely technically incompetent, but also, they're fucking superhero movies. They're not gonna be Kubrick or Fincher and everybody goes in knowing that, so that's my window of expectations. I'm not tearing them apart because they don't say anything profound artistically, but I'm also not giving them credit just for showing up with their clothes on. Third, this is obviously personal opinion, and I am not an avid comic book reader. Just feel like I should mention that up front. Alright, so we're starting off with the shit. Taking up the back of the bus, we got Thor The Dark World. I literally do not remember this movie. Movie. My brain just outright ejected the whole entire thing. The single remaining nugget, the flash photograph that I recall from this movie, is a moment where red CGI is eating the city, and I thought, I am so fucking bored, and it was such a strong feeling that that actually embedded itself in my mind as a legitimate memory. I don't think many people are gonna disagree with me on this one, but even if there was an okay movie that I don't recall here, I would rather see an outright bad film than something that I shove into the mental trash compactor before it's even over. Next up, we got Iron Man 2, another movie that's almost not even worth talking about basically a glorified trailer for the Avengers that runs for two hours. Mickey Rourke is in it, and he goes, it's not my bird, and that was okay, I guess. Next up, and I know I'm gonna get shit for this one, we got Spider-Man Homecoming. This movie actually bothered me. I feel like the most objective criticism of it that I can give is that it's the only existing Spider-Man movie without a decent fucking action scene, which is something that they've been nailing since 2001. Even the shitty reboot Spider-Man movies managed to do that right. And those were made by idiots. So the fact that you can't do it in 2017 with Disney money is kinda inexcusable. That said, there were a lot of things that just didn't work for me personally. I found a lot of the humor to be more annoying than funny. I didn't like the school setting or supporting cast of child actors. This version of Spider-Man, I guess, is like an Iron Man spin-off character. And I feel like that cheapened him more than the scenes with Robert Downey Jr. were really worth. Michael Keaton is probably the biggest redeeming quality here. I guess you could argue maybe this movie was aimed at a younger audience, so a lot of it just kind of struck me as lame. But saying that you can't make a good kids movie that adults can also enjoy is not really a valid excuse, especially if you're, you know, Disney. Next, we got Captain America, the first one. Captain America is okay in an ensemble cast, but he's fucking boring alone. I really like the segment where he's going around raiding Nazi bases and shooting Nazis, especially because it came right after that segment where he's being touted around as this dickhead mascot for babies, which felt like an acknowledgement to how I see the character. I don't want to kill anyone. I don't like bullies. <laughs> But that montage is like three minutes, if that. And then Captain America stops shooting people, and then th the real Nazis are replaced with fake Nazis. It's a cock tease of what this movie should have been. I guess they didn't want to show Captain America murdering people with a gun too much, I get that. But it just adds insult to injury when the movie is so mediocre. And there's potential for such a cool movie that they clearly acknowledge is there and chose not to deliver on. Okay, next up we got Thor. Not a great one. It was all right at the time. It was the first time Marvel did one of these big crazy CGI worlds and that was kinda neat and also kinda disorienting. The Natalie Portman romantic comedy with a thunder god thing it didn't really work, but it at least felt like a swing at something. I don't know, looking back, just nothing jumps out at me as particularly good, but it did feel like an interesting little experiment that kinda just didn't go very well. We're officially into okay territory now. All right, now we got Ant-Man. I remember liking this movie when it came out, but I don't really remember why. It was pretty unsubstantial, but it had some fun scenes. The feller, he turns little, so that's cool. The bad guy was just bad version of the good guy. In the scene where, for, for no reason, he fights 
the Falcon felt super shoehorned in. It's kind of hard to explain why this movie is higher than some of the other ones, just because a lot of it is in the execution. For what it's worth, I'm kind of trusting my gut on this one, because I remember actually liking this movie when I was really starting to burn out on these. Next up, we got Captain America Civil War. I've already made a video about this one. It's kind of weird. A lot of the plot threads and stuff like that hinge on the other movies. It's got a couple good action scenes, but they're pretty far between. So it doesn't really work as a dumb, fun film. There's some decent writing going on here and some really good character moments, but none of it has the amount of weight or tension necessary for this to function as a drama either. It doesn't have the dick to kill off any of the heroes, even minor ones. A lot of the character motivations, even though believable, hinge on misunderstandings, which is a little bit of a pet peeve. And the twist that the Winter Soldier killed Iron Man's parents. Let's just say that this would have been a couple places higher on the list if that wasn't in there. Spider-Man's introduction was really good, considering how little time they actually dedicated to it. I liked Spider-Man a lot more in this than in his own movie. Black Panther wasn't done quite as well. He gets a dramatic moment before he's even introduced, really. So it has no weight whatsoever. I guess they thought that his movie wouldn't sell tickets unless they introduced him in something else first. I'm sure all the plot points of these movies are corporately charted out before they're even given to a director. Maybe they did the best they could. It fails at a lot of things, but even when it does, I feel like I see what it was trying to do, and at least it tried. Except for that pointless Captain America love interest that came out of nowhere. What the fuck was- Next up, we got Captain America the Winter Soldier. I think this movie gets way too much credit, but I think I see what's happening that separates my opinion of it from maybe other people's opinion of it. I think this movie is a decent spy thriller, and a decent superhero movie. Most people add those two things together and they go, that was a really good movie. I think that those two things clash in a way that kind of makes it not work as either one. I genuinely don't know how anyone was surprised by the twist. I won't go as far as to say it was predictable, but anytime there's a secret spy agency in a movie, they're they're probably gonna be the bad guy at some point. And I think the Winter Soldier himself, for being the title character of this movie, and for as important as he becomes later down the line, he is not given a lot of screen time in this movie, which bothered me at the time, but not fleshing him out into a character that you actually wanna see on screen, that created a problem, and it splashes into the other films, because every time he shows up, I just, I don't care. Next, we got Avengers Age of Ultron. I think this one gets a little too much shit, but it's still not good. It succeeds in being a dumb popcorn movie because there's some pretty decent action scenes in it. I really like that part where they're all partying and shit. I actually liked Ultron. The movie had some pretty major pacing issues, though. It felt super crowded at points, but then there's that really long, awkward period where they're just hanging out with Hawkeye's family on a farm. Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver both sucked, but at least they had the common decency to kill off Quicksilver. The Black Widow Hulk romance kinda didn't work. I didn't hate it as much as some people, but I didn't like it either. And then the last action scene, it almost felt copy-pasted from the first Avengers. Okay, this one's gonna be a bit of a head-scratcher, but next we got The Incredible Hulk. I feel like most people have not even seen this one. In fact, you probably forgot about it and didn't notice how high it was getting on this list. This movie is stupid as hell, it is fun as shit. Edward Norton is in it, and he's one of my favorite actors. When I watched this movie, I was working out from home, and I put this on in the background, and I ended up lifting weights through the entire thing, just because it is pure testosterone-injected fun. I'm sure if I dissected it, I, I would find quite a bit that's not that great about it, but sometimes a movie pulls off being stupid so well, that it just doesn't warrant a dissection. Okay, next, Black Panther. I really want to put this one higher, but it falls apart at the end in such an unsatisfying way, and it almost turns the movie against itself. Like, Michael B. Jordan's character was my favorite character. He was fucking cool, and he had motifs. He had a fucking body full of nipples that he put on a new nipple every time he killed a person. He was a soldier, so he used guns and shit. He has a cool triceratops mask thingy that would have given him, like, a really iconic look as like a superhero villain. So explain to me why at the end of the movie is he stripped of all of that to become an evil Black Panther and then have a CGI fight with Black Panther. I liked a lot of the supporting cast, but I felt like it kind of could have used a little bit of pruning. Specifically, the FBI agent guy was super pointless, and Black Panther's love interest was kind of an unnecessary character. Did we really need a romance story with Black Panther? 
No, because we didn't get one. We just had like a weird kiss at the end. So, you know, he's not the gay. The bald chick was really cool. And I liked what they were going for with his sister. They could have used the extra screen time to flesh them out or used it on Black Panther himself. He's probably one of the less interesting characters in his own movie. Also, two of the other characters just become superheroes at the end of the movie, just out of nowhere, because they have to get in on the CGI too. That said, I liked a lot of this. Uh, Andy Serkis was also cool. Wakanda was a really neat setting. And Black Panther himself is all right. Okay, now we got Iron Man. I would say the first 45 minutes or so of this movie is some of the best screen time in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Period. And then the second half of it happened and wasn't very good. Next, we got Doctor Strange. This one is kind of on the line, but we're officially into good territory now. I really did not expect to like this one, and I ended up liking this one. Maybe it sounds like a cop-out to recommend a movie just because it's pretty, but this is one of the most trippy fucking films I've ever seen. This movie could have been an unwatchable mess, but somehow these crazy fucking action scenes where all this weird LSD shit is happening is actually coherent and you can follow what's going on. Also, the way he beats the big bad guy at the end is extremely clever. And even though this one retreads a lot of ground, it's all in the execution, baby. This one's solid. Okay, next up, this is gonna be another unpopular pick because it's way higher than most people would probably put it. Iron Man 3! All right, you're probably wondering why this one is so high. First off, it's one of the only one of these movies where the main character is flawed in a believable and meaningful way. Most of the character flaws in these movies are boring, sexy flaws. They lose a fight. A loved one died. They're too morally righteous to do what has to be done. They're too brash and overconfident. In this one, Tony Stark is a paranoid mess that has panic attacks from children's drawings. See, a flaw, like an actual flaw, shouldn't be something that you can use in a bar to pick up chicks. It should be something that clashes with your positive perception of a character. These kind of flaws make characters interesting. They make them more believable. The heart and soul of this movie is Tony Stark overcoming this flaw. It's deeply personal, and I feel like this puts this movie leagues above most of the other stuff in the MCU. Not done. Also, the twist with the Mandarin is probably the only genuinely surprising moment in this whole entire franchise. Also, I like that fucking scene where he's got just a gauntlet and a foot thruster, and he fucking takes out a bunch of dudes with a gun. This had some goofy shit too, but I like some of that. Like saving the president, that's probably objectively stupid, but in the exact kind of way that I want these movies to be stupid. The exploding people virus. I mean, come on. I just used the term exploding people virus. But the worst part of the movie is the literally like the last couple of minutes, which I feel like left a lot of people with a bad taste in their mouth and is probably the reason why everyone says this one is bad. Okay, now we got Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. The Guardians of the Galaxy, they're, they're fun. They're just fun characters to watch. This one just wasn't as good as the first one, but this one's still good. It's pretty funny, a little weird, but I liked it. All right, next up we got The Avengers. I don't feel like I need to explain this one. It's, it's like the perfect quintessential superhero movie. It hits every single generic beat you would expect it to hit, and it sticks the landing on everything, which is surprising considering this is pretty much the first time something like this had been attempted. This is gonna be a lot of people's childhood movie, like their Star Wars. It's going to be called a classic, and you're gonna feel old. You're dying. I'm sorry. All right, we're almost at the end of this thing. The runner-up, and this is a really close second. Guardians of the Galaxy. This movie is stylish, it's fun, the characters are great, the licensed music that they used for the soundtrack is spot on. It's a big fun adventure, it's like Indiana Jones in space. It's genuinely funny and charming. The one thing that keeps it out of the number one spot is the villain is just Nothing. He's nothing. He's a big blue guy. What is his name? All right, here it is. By process of elimination, you already know this one. It's Thor Ragnarok. I fucking love this movie. The scenes are all fun and interesting. The action is great. The soundtrack has a concise theme and flair, and it kicks like a motherfucker. I liked every character in this movie, and that pretty much never happened. Most of these movies are funny in that they make you chuckle every now and again, but this one is funny enough to outright function as a comedy film. And the imagery is goddamn metal. Look at this. 
knock my whole entire cock off. If I had to nitpick this one, I would say even though I like the way she looked, Hela probably could have been a little bit stronger. It's not as much of a problem as Guardians of the Galaxy, number one, because I actually remember her name without having to look it up, and number two, because she shared major villain duty with Jeff Goldblum, and he was great. The crossover scene is also a little bit unnecessary, but it's fun and it doesn't outstay its welcome. This might not be objectively the best movie in this cinematic universe, but it's so heavily laser focused just on my tastes that it has to be my favorite. And it's an amazing redemption considering it's literally the sequel to the lowest ranked movie on this list like a phoenix rising from its own ashes, except the ashes are a big, boring shit. So there you go, those are my ranksy doodles on the ones and the toodles, as in I'm going to put one over two inches of lead through my fucking head for saying that, and I'm still rhyming why. If you disagree with my list, please be extremely vocal about it in the comments, because like any good list, this is a democracy and you're allowed to vote on it, and I'll go back in my time machine, I'll change it just for you. If you liked this video, be sure to scraboople and I'll probably not make any other ones like it, including probably not making a video about Infinity War. Or maybe I'm lying. I don't know. Have a nice day and maybe eat an egg. They got plenty of protein. I'm gonna do a big ol' shut up now. Bye!